Hi everybody, Eve Everett here, and this is the What's Sold on eBay Party Dress Prom Inauguration Gown Edition. Oh, and without the music that apparently nobody likes but me. Okay everybody, uh, we're going to go backwards in time, starting with this mid-90s dress by Oscar de la Renta. And this is elaborately sequined, and... Um, let me check here. Uh, it sold for $95 and ended up being shipped over to the UK. Okay, and the next one is this really cool poof purple taffeta dress. Uh, you can see the little poofy, uh, actually it's like a double tiered poof uh, gown. And this is another prom gown. Uh, it's a very iconic 80s piece. Really love this dress. I uh, sold this for $175, shipped to California. All right, everybody, and the next round of dresses that you're going to see, at least the uh, ones from the 50s, are these uh, typical 1950s uh, party dresses uh, that I got at an auction. And uh, what happened is they had about uh, 15 of them hanging on a rack. I took a very quick look at them. I really wasn't planning on bidding on, on them. Um, but then, you know, I'm sitting there at the auction, you know, the auctions kind of, you know, the prices were very high, uh, for what was there. And I, so I went back and I looked at them again and I saw that there was a couple Fred Perlbergs. There was, uh, a lot of the, uh, typical, uh, amorphous could be worn for a wedding, could be worn for garden party type dresses with the tall. And I decided, well, you know, if the price is right, you know, I'll go for it. You know, if, if it's, if it's going to stay somewhere between three to $400 for, you know, the, the dresses that are here, then uh, that's doable for me. So uh, I ended up very being very lucky. I got the lot with the buyer's premium for about $312. Uh, somehow managed to lasso these guys all in, stick them in my car, get them home. Uh, went all out, put up this black cloth backdrop for several of them and took pictures. Uh, this particular dress, um, probably uh, late 50s, dark pink fuchsia, and um, had a few stain issues towards the bottom of the dress. Uh, posted this um, early October, sold it by Thanksgiving for, um, let's see, looks like $72 including shipping. This is a really pretty Fred Perlberg, P-E-R-L-B-E-R-G. Fred Perlberg can do really good, especially his uh, more poofy 50s dresses. Uh, I'm also later on going to show you a uh, polka dotted one, which is more of a you know garden party day dress. But in any event, this is more of a wedding style dress with tulle. It's got a white satin band around the middle. It was bought for a wedding and with shipping went for $145.25. Okay, this is a um, another one uh, from the same lot. Uh, it's a cream tall uh, party dress with a black print on it. And um, it's actually one of my uh, favorite dresses. I could not find a label on it, so I couldn't list it with a label. It has a nice shelf bodice, which is basically a bodice that kind of like sticks out the chest. And um, this actually sold to a lady in Romania for... Uh, $224 shipped. Uh, this is a very pretty, if not sheer, um, periwinkle and lime dress. It's got the bias cut at the waist and it has these, um, you know, at the skirt, it's got really gorgeous flair uh, to the dress. It's a very uh, pretty Ginger Roger-esque uh, type styling to it. And I actually uh, ended up putting this, oh, by the way, in case you're wondering, this is an overdress. Um, if you have any modesty whatsoever, you're probably going to wear a bias cut slip dress under it. Typically, those bias cut slip dresses are, they, you know, they have the spaghetti straps and the bias cut to go uh, with the dress. Honestly, I would love to see this dress on a real person because I would be fascinated to see how that would play out. You'd probably have to be really, really in shape and thin to wear this thing. Um, in any event, I did auction off this dress partially because of some of the damage that it had. Um, the bias cut and the lime inserts um, I knew would be a real attraction to true collectors. 
And I started this out at uh, $29.99 uh, at the end of August. And the final bid on it was $211.48. And this ended up going to Australia. Uh, this is another dress from the 1930s. It is a classic Kornhauser, K-O-R-N-H-A-U-S-E-R. -E it's a Kornhauser gown. It's got a very pretty uh, sequin bow towards the bottom with a lace insert. And probably the most important thing to remember about this dress is, yes, you can find dresses like this in um, typical thrift shops. Actually, I got this one at a thrift shop um, in New Jersey. And in my opinion, uh, it was in really good condition given its age and given that it was probably put on the floor by someone who really has no knowledge of how to properly care for a dress of this nature. Uh, but yes, if you're looking, I promise you, you can find some quality vintage dresses in your neighborhood. You just have to train your eye, just like you train your eye to see other things that you want to buy. Uh, they're out there. And here is the label. Uh, like most clothing, um, it's going to be very important that if a vintage item has the label that you take a picture of it. Uh, there are uh, collectors out there that they only collect Kornhauser. I don't understand why, but they just do. Um, it's pretty hard to find. And in any event, when I originally bought this dress, I knew that it was uh, an older dress, but I had no idea. I couldn't find the label. So I bought it anyway. I think I paid... Um, $4.50 for it, $4.50. It wasn't a lot. Uh, this is yet another dress that I auctioned. Um, because it was a Kornhauser, I thought it would do better at auction than uh, with a fixed price. Um, now, quite frankly, I have just gotten to the point where I just pretty much do uh, fixed price only. Although, I was listening to what uh, Craigslist Hunter said about uh, his decision to do uh, auctions sometimes, and I'm kind of flirting with the idea of running some auctions again. It's just a real pain. I just don't know if I want to go back to doing that to myself. It's a real infliction of torture, in my opinion. And I just find that when I do fixed price um, items and with a best offer, uh, usually uh, people are more cooperative and you don't run into people that have buyer's remorse. Uh, this particular dress, I started the bid at $34.99 uh, right after July 4th. Uh, and what happened is uh, the dress bid all the way up to $359. Uh, this was another person from Australia. I shipped it to Australia and she began nitpicking me on... Um, well, there's a couple of loose threads at the bottom of the dress. Uh, I really don't like the hem, you know, just like really, really small nitpicking type things. And I said, look, everything that you have an issue with, I put in the auction. Uh, if you, you know, what are you asking me for? Do you want to return it? Return it. That's fine by me. Well, she didn't want to return. What she wanted was a huge reduction in the price, which I was completely unwilling to do because, you know, you know, if someone's honest with you, um, that's one thing. But this was a clear case of somebody feeling that they uh, spent too much money. And for a Kornhauser, that is actually not even retail for a Kornhauser gown. So I don't even know what they were complaining about. Uh, she could easily flip that for a great deal more if she was willing to wait the time. But in any event, we went back and forth. Uh, I gave her a modest discount just out of good faith. And uh, she went on her merry way. And ultimately, ultimately a $4.50 uh, cent dress uh, wound up being uh, a $300 roughly uh, profit for me. Say hi to my cat. Um, I'm a cat person. This is a... Uh, part Maine Coon rest mongrel cat and whenever I'm doing work she looks for the most annoying place to decide to be cute and uh, that particular day she ended up on a pile of vintage fabric. Okay this is a Jacques uh, Doucet dress. Um, it is probably uh, towards the uh, end of his career. Um, more likely at the turn of the century into the, uh, maybe in the 1915 or so realm. Anyway, um, this is a um, yellow with a green tinge to it, a uh, velvet dress uh, with um, 
uh, blue embroidered uh, overlay at the arms and there is a belt uh, at the waist. And uh, he was a French fashion designer. And when I first got this dress, the first thing I did with this dress is I put it on the, the mannequin backwards and everybody laughed at me because I didn't know what I was doing. So uh, when I got it the right way around, it looked much better and it had, has a very nice line to it. But I just, I'm telling you, I really, when I put this dress on and looked at it on the mannequin, I'm like, this thing is really ugly. So there's the tag. Like I said, always take your tag shot. And this is the back of the gown which I originally put on the front of this poor thing. But anyway, um, this ended up being uh, auctioned off. I started at $34.99, um, and this uh, went to a lady in Norway for $461. And she ended up being a uh, very great uh, customer of mine. Uh, she's a huge fan of um, antique and um, vintage textiles ranging from the um, 1870s or so uh, through the uh, mid-1930s and I've done a lot of work with her. She's a great person. Uh, this is a turn-of-the-century heavily embroidered gown. Um, it's all silk. The embroidery work on it is completely amazing. Uh, here's a better look at the embroidery. Uh, here is another close-up of the gown. Although uh, this gown um, did have some flaws to it, uh, it didn't have stains, and it caught the eye of a woman living in Northern Virginia who uh, intended on going to the uh, 2012 inaugural ball that was, in, at that time, being anticipated of, on taking place January 21st. And... Uh, I auctioned this gown, and the lady won it for fifteen ninety nine and oh two cents. And she uh, got in touch with me right away, uh, explained to me uh, what she wanted, intended to use it for, and immediately my heart stopped because when people tell me that they're intending it to use it for something, I'm like, oh man, they're going to get it, and then they're going to suddenly realize that whatever they want to do isn't going to work, and I'm like, oh great. You know, right before Christmas, I'm going to get slammed. So that did not happen. And I really shouldn't be so pessimistic in general, but I've had that happen in the past and you know the story, yada, yada, yada. So I'm sure like you guys really care about that. So this person, she bought this gown and the gown was already in pretty good shape, beautiful construction to this gown. She had her own vision of what she wanted to use it for. Uh, I did get a picture that she took of it. Um, she repurposed this entire piece. And what she did uh, was she kind of, you know, kept to the inspiration. Of, she used it for inspiration. I mean, she she took this dress apart um, and reconstructed it so that it was more of a wrap dress with a more modern flair, something that was much easier to walk around in. And it you know, I hate to say it, but it looked really fantastic. And unfortunately, I can't share the pictures with you because I was expressly told or, you know, asked not to do so. And I respect people's privacy. Uh, this was worn to one of the only two official inaugural balls that took place on January 21st of 2012. And there you have it, people. 1600 bucks shipped to a lady in Northern Virginia. And trust me, she had a great time. So that's it for this week, guys. Happy hunting. Hope you find some great stuff and I will talk to you soon.